Shalom. First off, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, true name Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit is with comforts and guides us, especially during these times to come. I also want to give a double honor to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who teach and rule well with truth and sincerity, and salutations to the elect. If you love this world, ultimately, you were beat into loving oppression. Like the um, like they say, Stockholm Syndrome, where the person, the slave, starts to love their master. Because us waking up to this truth and receiving this truth through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh ultimately, we understand that this kingdom is not our rest. It's wicked and polluted. And when I say this kingdom, I'm talking about America, spiritually called Egypt, Sodom, Babylon the Great, the virgin daughter of Babylon, etc. The Lord is, based on the scripture, his will is to destroy America by way of World War III. And of course, with his son, Yahweh Shai, even he calls Jesus Christ, cracking them clouds, to destroy this kingdom after delivering his elect during the midst of World War III, the elect of the nation of Israel, the one third who's going to be fitted to be saved during that time. The nation of Israel today consists of the so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the Israelite foreigners that look like heathen but are not heathen because their father's seed line traces back to one of the 12 progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel because we were scattered around the world due to disobedience to the Heavenly Father in our past generation as well as this generation. But like I always say, like you can see based on the prophecies that are written in the scriptures that this kingdom is going down the drain. You can see World War Three is just about starting based on the wars going on over there in Israel. You know, the, 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 um, the situation that happened in Gaza with Hamas and Israel, etc., like those things were already written in the scriptures and our elders and apostles a great millstone on down to the men that teach the same doctrine were prophesying about these things to come from the scriptures for decades. But like I said, if you love this world, ultimately you were beaten to love oppression because for the most part, the people are mourning. You know, you got homeless rates going up. The prices of things are going up. People are struggling. And people are stressed out. That's why people are taking taking the um, route to try to use as much drugs as they can, trying to find an outlet to party as much as they can, to take their mind off of the reality of what's going on. They don't understand that the Lord's people are under the curses, along with the fact of the matter is that whoever's in rulership ultimately if it's a wicked person in rulership, then the world is going to lie in wickedness. But I'm going to start off with Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 3. It reads, well, I'm going to start at well, verse 2. Proverbs 29 and verse 2, it reads, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. And ultimately, the righteous will be in the authority when the Lord established our kingdom of everlasting righteousness, the Israelite kingdom. Because ultimately, as of right now, as the scriptures say in Job 9 and 24, the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The wicked is the so-called white man who forefathers Esau, Edom. The ones that's running this, this world, they ultimately are doing the bidding of Satan. I'm going to continue on. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people were, people mourn. So the wicked are bearing bareth ruling right now. And like I said, in our kingdom of everlasting righteousness, the people will rejoice, even though the other the um the the other seventeen nations which are heathen that are created, they're going to be under subjection to the Israelites, pan tributary, but they're still going to be better off than in this wicked kingdom. But I forgot, yeah, ultimately, the so-called white man, after their thousand years of slavery, is going to go into um. They're going to ultimately be extinct. They're going to be taken off the face of the earth forever, according to the scriptures. 
because of the wickedness that they've done to the Lord's people. The apple of the Lord's ass. But I'm going to go from there to um, Sirach. Well, Ecclesiasticus, and I'm going to start at verse 10. I mean, chapter 10. It reads, well, why is, I'm going to start at chapter 10 and start at the top. It reads, a wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered, and the ones of rulership are not prudent. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man that the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell there. An unwise king destroyeth his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. And we can see that it's an unwise king and rulership. The modern day pharaoh, like I said, is the so-called white man. You can see the example um, 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 unwise because how the world is going. The food is basically defiled. Even the, the plant life, the, the trees are are looking looking as if they're mourning. The people are mourning, like I stated in the um last the last um verse, the last scripture. All hell is breaking loose. Cause in the kingdom, like the scriptures say, we won't see war again. So that's how you know those so called Jew the Jewish people are not the Lord's people. They're not the true Jews according to the scripture. Because the scriptures clearly state in the kingdom of heaven we will not see war again. The kingdom of heaven will be on earth. But I'm going to continue on. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. And in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. And like I said, prophecy shows that eventually the Lord's people are going to be in rulership. And the hand of, the, of God is prosperity of a man and upon the persons of the scribes shall he lay his honor. But I'm going to um, go down to verse 8. It reads, because of unrighteous dealings and injuries and riches got by deceit. And how was America established? Through rob robbery, rape, murder, etc. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. But like I said, the point of this lesson is that a person that loves this world, especially our people, they love this world because they were beaten to love oppression. They don't have a kingdom mindset because I don't care what you say, regardless of how much money you have, you're ultimately under subjection to the so-called white man. Because you got to, at the top, the one who writes your check is ultimately, it's going to all trickles, it's going to boil down to that person because like the scriptures say the earth was given into his hands but I'm going to Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 33 it reads why trimmest thou thy way to seek love therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways and that's what a lot of these um Israelites that that, that that's in a higher position in this kingdom they did they trimmed their ways to seek love But the Lord has left a remnant that let of the nation of Israel that's not going to bow down to the image of Baal. Like the scriptures say in um, Romans the 11th, I believe the 4th verse starts at the 4th verse. Because ultimately the people that don't have this um, the, the truth, the 100% truth, they don't understand that this is not our rest. This is not the end all be all. So they feel like they got to do what they got to do in order to make it. But ultimately they don't understand that everything is of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha. So they end up doing things that's going to ultimately destroy themselves. So I'm going to go from there to um. Hold on one second. Mark chapter 8, starting at verse 36. And this is our Lord Yahweh Shah speaking. It reads, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So, 
like I said, a lot of these people that make it high up in this kingdom, ultimately, we understand that they sold their soul to Satan. So I'm going to jump over to Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 13. It reads, well, 12, it reads, There is a way which seemed right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Because they felt like it was right for them. They felt like, well, they can feed their family, you know, for generations. They can make it out the hood or whatever. The Lord put the spirit on them to think in their mind to feel like it was right to do it. Because like the scriptures say, the deceived and deceiver, deceiver are the Lord's. I believe that's in Job chapter 12 and the 16th verse. But like I said, people don't understand that ultimately, in order for us to make it out of this oppression, it's ultimately going to be through the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Because we can't fight our way out of it because our weapons of warfare is not carnal. It's a spiritual war. So we're, and we got to understand that we're under the curses written in Deuteronomy 28, starting at the 15th verse on down. But I'm going to go from there to Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. It reads, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even for, for, with a sore destruction. Because the whole point is, like I said, this is not our rest. So trying to be prosperous in this kingdom, America, or, or anywhere else in this world, ultimately, it's not our rest because this is not our kingdom. We got to go through the, you know, the trials and tribulations that we have to go through until the Lord is pleased. But like I said, only the elect of the nation of Israel is going to understand that and do the things necessary to ultimately hopefully be delivered because we're the hopefully elect because we don't know who's the chosen until, you know, all hell breaks loose and the Lord sees you through it. But like I said, we understand that we got to go through it. So I'm going to um, grab 2nd Ezra chapter 7. In verse 18, it reads, Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for wide. So the righteous is going to understand that we got to suffer the straight things and hope for the wide, the kingdom of heaven. For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things and yet should not see the wide. But the ones that's doing it continue to do wicked wickedness, you know, the two-thirds of our people that's not going to hearken to this truth are going to suffer the straight things as well and not see the why ultimately until they're, they're going to see it when they're reborn after being destroyed on this side and reborn in the kingdom because all Israel will eventually be saved but I'm going to jump down to verse 20 it reads for there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of God that is set before them for God had given them straight commandments to such as came what they should do to live even as they came and what they should observe to avoid punishment. So the Lord gives the instruction on what to do through his men, the servants, the prophets. And like I said, majority of our people are not going to hearken. And ultimately, they're going to continue to act as if they're happy in this world. That's why certain people, you know, that they got a lot of money, they end up committing suicide because they understand that they didn't achieve all this status and fame and, and riches, but they still, it's something that's missing, that they feel is missing. Because, like I said, ultimately, they're not happy. Because you can't buy happiness. But that's all I got. Shalom.